Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Efron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Tuesday means it's Type 2 or Standard Tuesday, and today's deck is pretty ridiculous. This is a weird hybrid of Oketra's Monument and Vampire Tribal. Calling it Vampire Monument, it took Kyle McLean to a top 16 finish at last weekend's SCG Classic. And if you're not familiar with SCG Classics, those are big tournaments, like hundreds of players. And this managed to make it all the way to the top 16. The big deal here, apart from just vampires and monuments and craziness, is the deck 66 bucks in paper, 30 ticks on Magic Online. So pretty close to an ultra budget deck the top 16 a real tournament so big congrats to kyle mclean on a ridiculously looking sweet deck so a quick reminder before we break down vampire monument for ixalan standard if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos take a minute click the like button the subscribe button leave a comment anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week so kind of the foundation of this deck is a Ketra's Monument. We've seen a Ketra's Monument decks before. The artifact has proven itself to be very powerful. Three mana makes all of our white creatures one cheaper to cast, and then whenever we cast a creature, we get a 1-1 one, one warrior as a kind of a kicker on top of casting our creature. So this does two things. It lets us play a ton of creatures really quickly. It also lets us go super wide, because whenever we're playing a creature, we're getting another creature. So kind of the new sweet synergy for Ketra's monument in this deck is Legion Conquistador, which is like a squadron hawk. It's a little more expensive, but the combo here is we play one of our Conquistadors for two mana with the monument out. We get a token, so we're getting three power and toughness across two bodies. We tutor up three more copies of Legion's Conquistador, which means we get to do that again and again and again for eight mana total. We're making 12 power and toughness across eight creatures with just a monument and a single copy of Legion Conquistador, which is super amazing, very powerful, lets us go super Super wide really quickly. Sench Conquistador is a vampire. We have some other vampires in the deck as well to take advantage of the synergy. And like I said, this deck almost walks the line between a more traditional Aketra's Monument deck and straight up Vampire Tribal. So Dustborn Sky Marcher comes down for just one mana, lets us mess with combat math a little bit, being able to pump an attacking vampire. Adanto's Vanguard, powerful two drop, gets in for three damage when it attacks, plus we can make it indestructible. Bishop soldier looks pretty weird and underpowered basically a grizzly bear with lifelink but again another vampire so lots of vampires in the deck why are we focused on playing all these vampires we don't have that many payoffs but we do have maverin fiend dusk apostle which lets us go even wider with tokens so it comes down for just two mana thanks to a Kedra's monument whenever we attack with a non-token vampire we get a lifelinking vampire token so we could just make a ton of tokens in this deck a ridiculous amount of go wide power paladin of the bloodstain looks really janky four mana three two but it does make a token when it enters a battlefield inspiring cleric gains us a bit of life also a vampire so we're just going as wide as possible with these vampires and the catcher monument making warriors spiraling things out of control we even have legions landing doesn't work with monument since it's not not a creature but it gives us a vampire which we like our vampires in this deck plus we're going to be able to flip it super easily and then we just have a steady source of make a lifelink vampire token for just three mana over and over and over every single turn as far as the non-vampires in the deck aviary mechanic does some sweet combo-y synergy since it lets us bounce one of our permanents when it enters the battlefield so this lets us pick up probably one of our vampires to recast it get another oketra's monument trigger maybe get another token from the creature itself so it just helps us spiral things even more out of control going even wider and then as far as finishing the game Apart from just attacking with a million 1-1 one -one vampires and 1-1 one -one warriors, Chef at Dunes really speeds up the process. This lets us make 10, 20 creatures and make them all into 2-2s two instead of 1-1s, one which helps us close out the game a bit faster. Angel of Invention, not a vampire, but another good way to pump our board. Comes down for just 4 mana if we have Monument out, so works well there as well. So these are our main plans for actually closing the game, making all of our small tokens into a little bit bigger of threats and letting us actually 
actually kill our opponent. The other big payoff is Dust to Dawn. So this is kind of a one-sided board wipe. We will blow up all of our opponent's big stuff. We don't really hit much of our stuff. A couple of our things do die, which is a little annoying, but not many of our creatures die to dust. And then it's like a draw 10 or something, because we just get back all of our creatures from the graveyard for five mana, which lets us just flood the board again, make a ton more tokens, and close out the game after the dust to dawn. For removal, apart from the dust to dawn, cast out just gets anything for four mana, can cycle it away if we don't need it. Mana base wise, bunch of planes, the Chef at Dunes, which we talked about, and Field of Ruin, very good against a lot of the flip into land cards, which are pretty popular, pretty powerful in standard, like Search for His Conta, for example. In the sideboard, Fairgrounds Warden is a sweet removal spell for a monument deck. Not really a permanent removal spell, because when it dies, our opponent gets a creature back, but comes down for two mana, can reset the counters on something like Long Tusk Gub. Cast out, gets rid of anything, more dust on, good in grindy matchups or big creature matchup. So if our opponent's killing a lot of our stuff, we want more dust on to get our stuff back. If our opponent's playing Carnage Tyrants and Registrar Alphas, dust on gets much better because it's blowing up all of our opponent's stuff. Authority of the Council is kind of our hoser for mono red, gaining us a bit of life, keeping the hasty threats in check. Gideon's Intervention is our pretty much one and only hope to beat a deck like Approach of the Second Sons, name the key combo piece, because while it's possible we can just outrace Approach, when you consider Fumigates and some of their defense, unlikely we're going to be able to just kill our opponent before they get their approach online, but Gideon's Intervention is a good way to make sure they can approach us. Also can name Scarab Gods, Hazarats, things like that that it is very hard to deal with. Fragmentize for artifacts and enchantments, and then another Angel of Invention for more pump action, and that is Vampire Monument for Standard, and that's our instant deck tech for today, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.